Hello everybody, Jim here, and welcome back. I just returned home from another epic game hunting trip, and a bit of a happy accident today, actually. Uh, I went out to West Tokyo to the neighborhood of Akishima, uh, because I wanted to go to a hard off that I used to go to quite a lot back in the day to pick up games all the time, but to my utter shock and horror, uh, I discovered that it has been permanently closed, so that's one less hard off to shop at, but a uh, quick check on Google Maps let me know that just like two or three stations away, literally minutes away, there was another hard off. There's always another hard off, uh, so I went there instead uh, just hoping and praying that they were going to have some games and consoles, and luckily they did. They had quite a lot, in fact. I was uh, confronted with lots of consoles, lots of games, some really cool, rare, expensive stuff, stuff I never see out in the wild. Uh, so again, today was really kind of a happy accident. I went to an unexpected hard off and just found all kinds of cool stuff. So you're gonna see all of that in the video and come back at the end of the video. We are gonna take a look at what my best finds of the day were. But with that being said, let's go game hunting. Hello everybody. Jim here and uh, just got off the train in a neighborhood called Haijima and I'm here today to go on a hard off run. I was actually intending to go to the nearby neighborhood of Akishima uh, which is a place I used to go to the hard off there all the time uh, but unfortunately when I checked Google Maps just to kind of like reassure myself of the location and the hours of operation, uh, I discovered to my horror, uh, it is permanently closed. Uh, so that really sucks. But I noticed right next door in the neighboring uh, neighborhood of Hajima, there's a hard off here. And it's about a 25 minute walk from the station. Uh, so that's where we're headed now. And uh, pretty cool because even though I used to live not too far from this area and I used to go to the hard off in Akishima all the time, I've never actually taken the time to come to this area. So it's, uh, it's nice. We're going to explore a little bit. Uh, we're going to go for a nice leisurely walk. It's a nice spring day. Uh, so uh, Google Maps tells me in about 25 minutes uh, we should be there and then hopefully uh, we'll be digging through a big, massive pile of retro games. I say that every time. I say, hopefully, we're going to have retro games, consoles, all that good stuff. I don't really know. All I have to go by are the pictures that people have posted on Google. And uh, they look pretty good for this one. And I had a day off from work. And there's a, <laughs> a, a like a campaign van behind me. Um... But I had a, a free day, so even if this hard off isn't particularly impressive, uh, it's cool because I get to come and go for a nice walk on a nice day and uh, check out this cool little neighborhood. So anyway, everybody sit tight. We're gonna walk down to the hard off and then we're gonna see what she's got. So stick around because that is coming up next. Coming up on it, you could see the big blue sign from afar. 
Uh, nice walk. This is a really nice uh, area. A uh, nice leisurely stroll on a spring day. Perfect. I even passed another kind of like secondhand book and game store uh, on the way here. These kids are just getting out of school. Even a uh, stop and got myself a coffee. Just a little pick me up. Oh, here we are. Hard off, baby. And uh, it looks like it's uh, kind of an all in one kind of thing. There's hobby off. Off house and hard off all together. So they should have games, they should also have like figures, model kits, trading cards, and other electronics and stuff. So, all right, awesome. So, we're gonna have some fun. Uh, let's go see what they got. Again, fingers crossed we find uh, some games, consoles, all that good stuff. So, here we go. Hard off. Here we come. Getting started with a whole bunch of games and a telescope and a keyboard, so right off the bat, it's awesome. Uh, we have a huge wall of Super Famicom and Famicom. This is where the bulk of their uh, Nintendo stuff was. There was some more uh, scattered about, but we'll come to that later. First up, Super Tetris 3 boxed, 1,000 yen, and uh, I'll say this now, the price is here. Uh, pretty damn good. Uh, what's that? 800 yen for a complete copy of Super Donkey Kong. 1,000 yen for a complete copy of Puyo Puyo 2 Remix. And 300 for Super Butoden. Uh, so just for reference, with the exchange rate right now, that's like 750 for like, uh, boxed games. As low as like a couple of bucks for that Super Butoden. Uh, but we're looking at loose carts. Uh, lots of good stuff here. Some mostly like pretty common stuff um, But again, the prices are great. Like I think the loose carts at the low end. They're like 300 yen uh, Which is like a couple of dollars right now and at the high end. I think it was like a thousand yen uh, What is that 500 yen for Fatal Fury special? That's pretty good and uh, So yeah, we're just gonna let's uh, relax shall we browsing uh, all of these loose cards, but yeah, so I think 300 yen right now is about two dollars American and a thousand yen is about seven dollars and fifty cents uh, So all of the stuff on this shelf um, Like two bucks on the low end like that copy of Super Donkey Kong It's like a couple of dollars uh, which I think uh, if you're looking for Donkey Kong Country in the US I don't think a loose card of Donkey Kong Country is gonna run you two bucks but what about Dunk Star? By, by, uh, by Sammy. Super Dunk Star. Directed, uh, um, by John Carpenter. Um, hey, let's carry on. Uh, we got lots of, uh, box stuff here. Again, good prices. Good shape, too. Pilot Wings. What is that? 300 yen? Oh, yeah. 300 yen for a complete copy of Pilot Wings. So, again, like $2.00. Uh, so you can't argue with that. We've got a few loose Game Boy games here. And uh, that's this is kind of an area where I uh, don't have much expertise. I'm not a huge expert on handheld games. Uh, but we got more good stuff here on the Super Famicom. Seiken Densetsu 2 for 500 yen. So maybe about $3.50. And that will get you some Secret of Mana. And 500 yen also for Super Mario Kart. Uh, complete in box, and the box looks to be in pretty good shape. Uh, so again, I challenge you, find a complete copy of Super Mario Kart in a North American game shop for $3.50. Uh, that is the challenge. Uh, some Ranma 1 half. 
uh, for 1,000 yen boxed. So that's pretty cool. The Ranma games on the Super Famicom are okay, I guess. They're kind of, um, you know, subpar, really, uh, 2D fighters, but they're, they're kind of fun. They have a charm to them. Uh, 800 yen for Yu Yu Hakusho 2, which is actually a pretty decent 2D fighter uh, developed by uh, Namco. Of all people, Namco actually developing all of those uh, Super Famicom Yu Yu Hakusho games back in the day. 500 yen for these Yoshi Islands, Super Donkey Kong. We've got some Final Fantasy VI, some uh, Fire Pro Wrestling, Tetris Battle Guy Din. That's awesome. Super Poyo Poyo. And some more Dragon Ball Xenus. Which I would have gone nuts for those games when I was a kid. Whoa, yeah! Super WrestleMania for 500 yen, and it's got the manual, brother. Nice. Even though, you know, Super WrestleMania, not as good as, like, Royal Rumble and WWF for all. that. Those games, those LJN published WWF games, they got better over time. Uh, Space Invaders, pretty cool. By Taito. I like Space Invaders. I like those old school arcade shooters. Anyway, we got some uh, box Game Boy games here. Pretty cool. Some Detective Conan. Some hamsters for you if you like some hamsters. And we got a Poyo Poyo 2. Pocket Poyo Poyo 2, as a matter of fact. And that's complete. And that's in nice shape. And that's, uh, what, 1,200 yen? So like 10 bucks? Not bad at all. And we got a whole lot of loose Famicom games, starting with, I think for 500 yen there, Tiny Toon Adventures. Uh, love that game. Very good, uh, solid platformer by Konami. We got Transformers! Which I have to say that every time. I'm sorry if that <laughs> annoys you. I have to do that every damn time. Uh, but we got Kunio Kun games. We got Dragon Ball Z. We got Super Chinese. We got Transformers! Again! Uh, we got more um, Kunio-kun. This is all good stuff. And again, just like the Super Famicom games, you're looking at these prices. 300 yen there, 400 yen, 500 yen here. So they're a few bucks a piece. Galaga, nice. Uh, so yeah, for like a few bucks each. That's not bad. 500 yen and you can get yourself Super Star Force. Uh, which is pretty cool by uh, uh, Tecmo. So one of the earlier, kind of like top-down shoot 'em up games back in the day. Those are pretty good. Stuff like the original, like Star Force, Super Star Force, Star Soldier. I like all that stuff. We got more stuff down here, though. We got some Adventure Island, Dino Ricky, uh, a couple of the Jaja Marukun games. We got a bunch of copies of Super Mario 3. We got Yoshi's Cookie. We got games for days. And they're color-coded, so who can argue with that? And uh, some N64 games, including some Puyo Puyo Sun, Paper Mario, Wave Race, and uh, there weren't as many N64 games as the others, but that's pretty typical. We got uh, some Goemon, Mario Tennis, Donkey Kong 64, 300 yen. So that's nice. Mickey Racing USA, that's a good one. And uh, what is that? Blast Dozer, a.k.a. I think Blast Core. Which is a fun game by Rare. Just ram into things with heavy machinery and blow it up. What, uh, what could... Uh, be more fun than that. Some Yoshi no Tamago. Complete. 500 yen. And it's in really good shape. And that's a really fun game. So for like $3.50. Take that baby home with you. Take that home with you. Push the whopper button. For anyone who knows what the hell I'm talking about. 1200 yen for Famicom Jump. That's a good price on that. Uh, so as we're seeing here. Yeah. Really good prices in this place. Like I think the highest price we've seen on a game so far has been like 10 bucks and that's really good complete copy of diddy kong racing 500 bucks but there's some some uh, damage to the box and to the manual but that's still that's 500 yen for a diddy kong racing like that would be acceptable for a loose card uh donkey kong 64 that's a thousand yen that's good and that's nice and complete and in pretty good shape so again what we're seeing here is mostly like 10 dollar games and we've got Konami Mahjong Master, finally! The search is over, we can stop making these videos, we found the Mahjong Master. And a complete copy of Poyo Poyo Sun 64 for 800 yen, and look at that beauty. What a nice, uh, nice looking box, baby! 
Uh, and it's 800 yen. That's like $6, maybe? That is a steal. And we've got some loose uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. And uh, that's pretty cool, too. We got you Dr. Mario's. Again, more Poyo Poyo. Uh, we got some Yu Yu Hakusho for like 500 yen. Those are pretty cool, too. Uh, honestly, a lot of the 16-bit, the that era of Yu Yu Hakusho games, they're mostly pretty damn good. Uh, we got Kunio, we got other stuff, but uh, man, yeah, just to kick things off, uh, lots and lots of games at really good prices. I love this place already. Jesus. Okay, getting started with some consoles, quite a lot of them actually. Uh, we got a couple of boxed Mega Drives and quite a lot of PS4s and even some PS5s, uh, which is interesting. Uh, somebody, I guess, or a handful of people decided to dump off their PS5s at the hard off. They're selling them for about 500 bucks and they come with 30 day warranties and uh, this 32X. Uh, with a Mega Drive, everything, all the fix-ins. It was like 400 bucks. Uh, and here we have some minis, Astro City Mini. And um, I think that was another one back there. Is that the Egret back there? And there's a Mega Drive Mini, Neo Geo Mini. Even some uh, sealed uh, VMUs back there. Kind of cool. Uh, and then here we have some of the, I guess maybe like a little bit pricier Famicom and Super Famicom games. Uh, that they didn't put on the previous shelf we were just at, but we got uh, boxed Poyo Poyo and other various things here. Uh, so that's pretty cool. What else we got here? East 3, Wanderers from East, which uh, the Super Famicom version is quite good. Uh, that game is good on everything. It's good on the PC Engine, the Mega Drive. Uh, Super Famicom, uh, nice visuals on it, good sound as well. And uh, Ultima 6. I think is the false prophet, right? It's the one where the avatar has to, uh... Well, I think eventually they make peace with the gargoyles, but he's got to go and kill the gargoyles or fight them or something, or they want to kill him. Anyway, uh, some cool Famicom stuff here, including Gradius 2, which is uh, always uh, fantastic. YY World 2, and... Some turtles, that's nice. Double Dragon, the original. Double Dragon, always good. Twin B, even though, you know, the original Double Dragon is single player only. Except, I think you can do like a little versus mode, right? Uh, here we have one of the glass cases, and um, we're going to see some pretty crazy stuff in here. Some high, high prices, rarefied air. But they had some cool Famicom and Super Famicom stuff. Some box stuff back there. We got... Uh, Turtles in Time, still about like 30 bucks, and that ain't bad. Some Gombody Goimon, some, uh, what does that say, Wrestle Angels? I have no idea what the hell that is, but okay. Some Zeldas, all that good stuff. Little Mermaid for ya, DuckTales 2, Gunnack, which is really cool. Um, but let's pan, uh, pan over here. What do we got? Hot Scramble! Gundam Hot Scramble. Rekka, and, like, a $3,000 copy of Zelda, the, the, Fam the Famicom disc version. I don't know why that's, like, $3,000, but it is. Uh, so there you go. Uh, some of the more expensive things I've ever seen. Actually, that, that Zelda, for the disc system, I don't recall why it was that expensive, but, um... That's maybe the most expensive thing I've ever come across on a, uh, a game hunt. So, there you go. More consoles to be perused. Had a lot of PS3s, some PS4s, and what have you. Uh, but we're going to take a look at some Saturn, Super Famicom, some retro stuff. And honestly, as we look at the prices on these, um, as good as the prices were for the games I was looking at, the consoles... Actually, a little bit expensive, we can see here. Um, not so much for that Saturn. 7700 is okay. But over 100 bucks for some of them. Uh, over 8000 for these Mega Drives. 18700 yen. So that's about maybe 140 bucks for a 3DO FZ10 or 100 or whatever it was. 
Uh, and 15,400 for this white Saturn, which it, it's in really good shape, but that's definitely too much to ask for it. Uh, but right next to it, though, this pretty cool uh, console I don't come across very often. The Victor Saturn. Um, so that's cool. Kind of an, uh, a, a less common model of Saturn. And those are 13.2 and 16.5. And speaking of uncommon, a blue Hello Kitty Dreamcast. Which is pretty cool. 27,500 yen. So that's like $220 probably for that Dreamcast. Which it is a uh, you know, rather unusual model. Uh, 13 2 for this Super Famicom that comes with like the big carrying case. In case you need your uh, Super Famicom and games on the go, you know. I'm on the go usually, aren't I? You know, I could probably use one of those. Uh, but that's pretty cool. And then we have some AV Famicoms. And again, kind of expensive. 100 bucks, more or less. And then 16,500 yen. Probably 120 bucks, but you get all this. You get a boxed adapter, AV cables, and then the original box itself. So uh, that's kind of cool. You get everything all in there. So that's nice. Uh, so yeah, a whole lot of consoles there. And uh, boxed consoles as well. What are we looking at? We're looking at boxed N64s, Dreamcasts. Uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, Famicom still has like a little user's manual in it. And then we got the orange and white Dreamcast boxes because they came in a couple of different box designs. And uh, what else we got? We got PS2s, PS3s, PS1s. They had quite a lot of box consoles, as a matter of fact. So that's pretty cool. And uh, here we're actually going to take a look at this case that I almost missed. And there was some especially interesting stuff there. You can see they got a bunch of Game & Watch. Which is really cool. It's always nice to see that, you know, Game & Watch survive and stick around. And this, this old Puckman, kind of like a uh, little handheld thing from like 1980, 81. Really old, really cool. I'd only ever seen like a commercial of it before. Uh, the Super Famicom Junior, that's kind of cool. PS1 or PlayStation Mini. And this, I thought was really cool. 93,500 yen for a Panasonic MSX2. So this is like... I don't know, like a $750 uh, MSX2 here, but it's got controllers and it's got all kinds of stuff with it, so that's pretty cool. And we got some Galaga Super Famicom Minis, a uh, Core Graphics with an Avenue Pad 3, so that's kind of cool. Uh, don't come across too many of those, it's 22000 so it's like $180, which isn't cheap. And this, a Sega SG-1000. Model 2, I suppose. That's 22000 so that's like 175 bucks. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, so yeah. Kind of uncommon stuff. Saw some really expensive stuff. And just things I never see too often. So, uh, cool consoles indeed. Alright, another cool case with some cool stuff, uh, but expensive stuff, so, you know, look out for that. But there's cool things in there, there's some Getsu Fumaden, Super Bomberman, Mad City, aka Bayou Billy, uh, and Tiny Toon Adventures 2, which I don't come across too often. Uh, so some pretty cool stuff in this case, although I didn't want to give everything in the cases away, because, uh, you know... Finds of the day is coming up at the end of the vid, but we move right along into this aisle uh, where they had a whole bunch of uh, mostly like PlayStation stuff. So that's what we're going to take a look at now because I was in a real PlayStation y mood. But what kind of cool stuff do we got? For example, uh, Eco for like 500 yen, I think it was, and some Zone of the Enders 300 yen. And we got some, uh, well, no, we don't have Initial D, we have Gran Turismo 4. Because, yeah, of course we do. And then Initial D, thank you. Uh, for like 2,000 yen or something, so. Not so cheap for Initial D, I guess that one's less common. I do really like that game, though. I think it's called Initial, it's a uh, special stage or something like that. Um, but most of these uh, PS2 games and a lot of the PS1 games we're going to look at as well. 
Uh, similarly to the loose cartridges we were looking at, a lot of this stuff is like 300 yen. Like between 300 and 1,000 yen. So like, I don't know, $2.50 on the low end and like, I don't know, 7 bucks on the high end. Uh, so yeah, lots of uh, not too expensive stuff here, including some Gundam something or other. All right, and that's, uh, what, 1,500 yen? And it's unopened. It's a factory sealed version, and they're selling it for 1,500 yen. That's cool. That's like, what, 12 bucks? Not bad at all. And some Kaniku Man, although this one, 5,000 yen. I'm guessing, because I've seen this one around a number of times, I'm guessing that one is uh, less common than this one here, which is 1,500. Some sort of like Grand Prix Max Kaniku Man something something. Uh, what what were those little figures called back in the day? Muscle Man. This is a true treasure, though, for 6,000 yen. Uh, the Koko Ichiban Curry House. Anyone who's ever been to Japan, you know that uh, Koko Ichi is, uh, or as we used to call it, just call it Koko's back in the day. Really great chain of curry restaurants. So now there's a whole game you can play that's all about running your own curry restaurant living the dream as they say uh, what is that like Wangan 3 this is kind of cool an Ashtono Joe keyboard set by Sunsoft of all uh, of all people so that's kind of cool what else do we got here we got a lot of copies of Devil May Cry not so surprisingly I might add and they're all 300 yen a piece so all the Devil May Cry games are super cheap as it's uh, the Grand Prix series, something or other, and Tokyo Bus Guide. Although that's like 2,200 yen. I don't know why. Like, I I played that game like years and years ago, almost as like a joke on the channel. And uh, just could not see the appeal of it. But there's some uh, some Taiko Drum Master. The Sengoku Basara games, those are cool and they're always super cheap as well. And so are these, the Dynasty Warriors games. All of these games are like two bucks. They're super inexpensive. You can come in here with like 20 bucks, leave with a stack of 10 games. 10 good games, by the way. You can leave here with Jack and Daxter and Devil May Cry and all that stuff. Like all these PS2 classics. They're practically giving them away. Blade. Blade Battlers. <laughs> Bleach Blade Battlers. Say that three times fast. Some Hajime no Ippo. I think, what is that? Way of the Samurai. Those are all pretty cool. I'm more of a fighting game guy myself, but uh, all this stuff is pretty neat. We got all these Final Fantasies here. I mean, there's Final Fantasy X and X-2 and whatever else. Puyo Puyo Fever! Kizadi. So there's a little bit of damage. And Fantavision! Fantastic fireworks! I always love that cover, by the way. Like this, like, 1970s family just sitting around their weird little TV. For whatever reason, it makes me think of Dawn of the Dead. Like, when I think of the 70s, I just think of Dawn of the Dead. I don't know. I don't know that, like, red shag carpeting in that scene in the beginning. Like, I don't know, the electronics just had their own kind of unique quirks and designs. When I just see old stuff like that. Look at all those copies of Intelligent Cube and Intelligent Cube Final and Ark the Lad and all that other stuff. Chrono Cross. This, that, and the other thing. Uh, again, lots of cheap games, mind you. Ace Combat, 300 yen. Ace Combat 2, also 300 yen. Uh, so a lot of the stuff they have here, pretty common. The game of life. How's, how's life treating you, by the way? Overblood, 3D active adventure. I don't think I've ever played Overblood, but uh, kinda, you know, cool cover. Feet, you know what I'm saying? Uh, NBA Power Dunkers by Konami. I wonder what what that is like. I'm sh if they would have published that in the U.S., I wonder what that was. I'm sure it would have had some other title. Power Dunkers. I don't know about all that. Three hundred for Um Jammer, Lammy, and Vampire Savior EX Edition. Fifteen hundred yen. It's EX because I don't know why. But that actually that's the version we played a, a lot when I was a kid. It was called uh, uh, Darkstalkers 3 back in the day. Initial D for 1200 I'm guessing. Uh, just the original Initial D. Was that a console game first or arcade game first? I'm imagine I guess it was arcade first. I remember playing the original Initial D arcade at uh, Aladdin's Castle. Uh, Galaxian Cubed. 
So you this this ain't your dad's Galaxian. This is the new uh, Galaxian. It's cubed now. Which I guess this means it was probably like in 3D or like faux 3D. Because why would you need to play Galaxian in 3D? Who gives a damn? If you're playing it in 3D, is it really Galaxian anymore? The hell out of here. Some Time Crisis. That's cool. I remember back in the day having a Time Crisis game on my PS2. The light gun was very elaborate. You had to hook it up to a bunch of different crap. But, you know, wires everywhere. But it was fun. And we we liked it. Here we have something or other. I don't know what the hell. And Snowbow Kids Plus. Uh, I like me some Snowbow Kids. I'll tell you that much. Um, probably better on the N64, though. What else we got here? Chess, because, you know, you want to be the chess master. Legend of Mana, 300 yen. And Star Ocean, the second story, 500 yen. One of my favorite PS1 RPGs, probably in my top three, along with Legend of Mana. I really do like both of those games. If you like RPGs and you have not tried Star Ocean, you're missing out. The Misadventures of Tron Bon. Uh, that's really cool. What is that, like 2,800 yen? Is that what that said? Uh, actually, a pretty decent price on that, even though it says on the case that there's some damage uh, to the disc and, uh, I guess, manual and everything. But that is an awesome game. Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Battle, 22, 300 yen. Good lord, this game was a disappointment back in the day. Um, I actually imported, like, all of those Dragon Ball games, and they just sucked so hard. Uh, this is pretty cool. Tales of Fandom. Like, a disc made just for fans of the Tales series, so that's cool. Uh, and then we got DBZ Legends for 800 yen. This is the better game. Like, I remember I had imported Final Bout first and had fun with it. I was like 12 or 13 at the time. Then we got Ultimate Battle 22 and I almost cried. Then we got Legends and we had fun with Legends. Some, uh, Bokan... What is it? Bokan... Bokan Desio. Uh, I think that's the top-down shooter. Those are fun. Uh, those are pretty cool. I like those. There's a couple of the Bokan games. There's Bokan Toy Pots and Bokan Desio. Um, there's a bunch of Dragon Quest. There's a bunch of Biohazard down here. Um, let's see, what do we got? We got Biohazard 2 with that cool cover. And we have got, uh, ooh, Bushido Blade, 500 yen. I played that demo to Helen back back in the day. Pac-Man World, the original Biohazard. Ooh, but no manual. And then, hey... <laughs> The manual and disc, but like no case, so I guess if we like buy the both of these, we can sort of hodgepodge them together, have a complete game. Uh, and then Biohazard 2 with Spine Card. And there you go. All good stuff. All good, I say. Uh, but that is nice. Like, if you want to start collecting for the Japanese PS1, as long as you're not going for like those super rare, hard to find games. I mean, you can start a very respectable collection for like a hundred bucks. Um, but there's some Poyo Poyo. There's some Vib Ribbon. Vib Ribbon's cool. Nice, quirky stuff. That's pretty fun. And uh, again, nice and chibi cheap. Biohazard Director's Cut. Is that the Dual Shock version? Great game. I always loved uh, playing that. Going back through the arranged mode and all the items and everything's all moved around. Metal Gear Solid, which I wasn't a huge fan of, admittedly. Probably because I made the mistake of uh, playing it with a friend of mine. I had one of those friends that's like, um, you know, and there's one-on-one. -on -one. There's a cool game, but I think I reviewed that back in the day. Fun one-on-one -on -one basketball game. But you ever have that friend where it's like you're playing a single-player game and you're playing in turns, and then, like, when it's your turn to play, you're like, you, you're three minutes into your turn, and he's like, wait, 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 let me see something. No, 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 no you're missing Let me see something. And so he just pesters you and pesters you to let him quote unquote see something and then you uh hand him the fucking controller and i'm getting hot now i'm sorry <laughs> just remembering this you hand him the controller to like let him see something and then he plays for like the next 15 minutes like trying to see whatever the hell it was he wanted to see and then he hands the controller back to you because whatever and then you're playing for like another three minutes and he's like all right and he wants the controller back and you're like dude you've just been playing he was like that was part of your turn King of Fighters 97 on the Neo Geo CD. Now I'm getting upset because I'm remembering that asshole ruined Metal Gear Solid for me. Snatcher, <laughs> speaking of Kojima, 3,000 yen, Snatcher on the PC Engine. Um, you know, cool, great game. And then the rest, there wasn't really much else to speak of on the PC Engine uh, except Tengai Macchio. That's pretty cool. 
Uh, but man, all the memories are coming back now. He was definitely, I'm not going to name names, but he was that kind of guy. As soon as you had the control in your hand, he's like, wait, let me see something. Wait, let me see. No, it's, no, you, there's something. I'm pretty sure you got to do something, but okay, just tell me what to do. No, no, let me see. And then, and then 20 minutes later, oh, it's my turn. You, you letting me play was, uh, that was part of your turn. Sorry. And you just wanted to kill him. And you, we're not friends anymore. After Outer World for the 3DO. Alone in the Dark for the 3DO. This took a turn. Uh, Alone in the Dark 2. Comment down below. Can you relate? And then there's some other random stuff. Anyway, I'm getting hot. I think we filmed enough. Uh, let's get out of here. Let's, let's get outside for some final words and our finds of the day. What do you say? I lay by the bay, make things out of clay. Okay, so that was more epic than I was expecting. Uh, this hard off in uh, Hajima, I think with the exception of like maybe some of the consoles, the prices were really good and they had uh, a wide selection of games, at least for like Famicom, Super Famicom, PS2, PS1, that kind of thing. Not so much on like Saturn, Dreamcast, PC Engine, uh, but I was happy with what I found today and I did uh, pick up uh, quite a few games. I got them safely nestled in my backpack uh, so I get to um, kind of like do a little bit of a rucksack uh, walk back to the station. But uh, let's do that. Let's go for our walk back to the station, get my cardio in today, and then we'll be back at home and we'll take a look at my finds of the day. So I'll see you then. Let's go. Come on, feet. All right, so there you go, everybody. Did I not say that there were a lot of games in that place, including some really cool stuff, some like wild stuff I never see. Uh, that Gold Cart Gundam game for like $1,000 and Rekka and other cool stuff like that. Um, that was really cool. It, it's always fun, even though I know like I'm, I'm not gonna buy things like that. I'm not gonna spend $1,000 on a gold card of Hot Scramble because it's not really a great game anyway, but it's a thousand dollars, people. Um, even that, it's it's cool to see something like that. It's almost like going to a museum and seeing some like rare uh, art piece in there. But uh, yeah, had a great time. It was a beautiful day. Hajima is an awesome neighborhood, uh, so I had some fun just like walking around, even before and after the game hunt. Uh, took some time to sit down at a little restaurant, get a little something to eat, just enjoy the day. Awesome, awesome neighborhood. And I picked up a bunch of games today. I think I picked up like 45 or 46 games, and the grand total was in the neighborhood of like 38,000 yen. Uh, so for 40-something games, that's not too bad. And the finds of the day are right here. Actually, all three of these I ended up getting out of one of the display cases. Uh, they were on the end caps because um, despite the fact that they're in the, the uh, display case, they're a little more expensive, they're actually really reasonably priced compared to uh, what I normally see stuff like this going for. Uh, so I got three games right here that uh, when I, I found them for the price I did, I said I have to pick these up. First up, for the Sega Saturn, uh, you can see obviously I'm a huge Gradius fan. This though, not Technically, Gradius, we have the Salamander Deluxe Pack. And this is a collection of three arcade games, the first one being the original Salamander, kind of an offshoot of the Gradius series, uh, Life Force, which I believe was more of like the North American version where the original Salamander, the power-up system is as you destroy strings of enemies or the, the red enemies, you just pick a power-up and you've got it. It's like a normal shoot-em-up game. As soon as you touch the power-up, you have the power-up and that's it. Whereas Life Force, the power-up system is the same as the Gradius series. So you pick up your power-up icons and then you choose from uh, a bunch of different power-ups down below. And then, the, uh, the best thing though, the, the reason I wanted to pick this up take it home and play it before I, I send it out to anyone. Salamander 2 is on here, and I can't think of any other way to play Salamander 2 except for this uh, collection or having like 
you know, the arcade version, but Salamander 2 is so awesome. It's essentially just like the original Salamander, same uh, basic gameplay, but like a total overhaul. Uh, awesome graphics, amazing soundtrack. You get the side scrolling and the top down. Uh, stages and I just like the Life Force games. I like the the look of them. I like that it's a more like um, biological as opposed to like uh, space technology sci-fi stuff. Uh, lots of weird-looking creatures and monsters and things and uh, really um, like I like you would say like biological like fleshy environments. Uh, so kind of gross, but also super cool. So. Uh, yeah, I definitely had to pick this up. It was like 2,000 yen, which is just like an absolute steal. Uh, so there you go, the Salamander Deluxe Pack on the Sega Saturn. Amazing find. And two PC Engine games, starting with the one, the only, except there is also a sequel on the CD, uh, but it's PC Dingen. Which, uh, if you don't know what PC Dingen is, I think... In the US, on the TurboGrafx-16, this is called Air Zonk. Um, so, kind of a different version of Bonk. Bonk walks around and headbutts things, and he's a little caveman. And Zonk, aka the PC Dingen, is like a little robot guy with a lightning bolt on his head. And he flies through the air, and he destroys enemies. And that's about uh, <laughs> the, what it is. It's not a too terribly complex plot. Um, actually, I don't know. I didn't really follow the play. I didn't really care. I just wanted to fly around and shoot stuff. But this game is really fun. As a shoot 'em up it's pretty solid. It can be kind of tough. I don't think it's on par with, uh, I don't know, some of the other, like, like I'd rather play maybe like Blazing Lasers or uh, Gate of Thunder, stuff like that. But this still uh, really fun shoot 'em up All the power-ups you can pick up in here are pretty crazy. You get all kinds of rockets and homing shots. You can shrink down to a, like, tiny little mini PC uh, dungeon which is really cool, and but you know, basically it's a shoot 'em up so you fly around, you blow everything up, you blow up a boss, and then you move on to the next stage, and you have fun doing it, so it's a really great game. Uh, the graphics are fantastic. I think this is one of the better looking PC Engine games, just period. One of the best looking uh, games in uh, the library of uh, PC Engine games. Um, really colorful, vibrant, big character sprites, very detailed, and an amazing soundtrack as well. Uh, Hudson Soft always crushed it when they released something on the PC Engine. Uh, so I was ha really happy to find this game. Again, uh, much cheaper than I usually find it for. I think this was maybe like 3,500 or 4,000 yen, when typically it's like, it's like twice that. So I was like, absolutely, I'm picking that up. PC Dingen, Punkic Cyborg for whatever reason. I think they just made up a word, punkic. Is that a new adjective that I wasn't aware of? And finally, also on the PC Engine, great game. Another one of like the classics of the PC Engine library, if you ask me anyway. And another Hudson Soft game, it is Jackie Chan. AKA Jackie Chan Action Kung Fu. Um, Never played the Turbo Graphics version, so I can't attest if there are any differences, but I have played the Famicom version, that one's also really cool. But, uh, this game, pretty straightforward action platformer. So as Jackie Chan, you walk around, you punch and kick bad guys, you collect power-ups, uh, so you can do all kinds of cool special moves, like spinning kicks, Tatsumaki Senpukyaku, and Hadoukens and stuff. And that's about it. Go around, kill enemies, get power-ups, get points, uh, beat bosses, and continue on. It's just a really solid, honestly, one of the better uh, platformers on the PC Engine, uh, in my opinion. I know there are a lot of platformers on the PC Engine, but really the only ones I ever really liked were like maybe like Dracula X and the PC Genjin games. And uh, this one right here, because uh, some of the other ones I've played, like there's like the Valis series and stuff like that. Most of those are pretty wonky. Um, there are a lot of like wonky, sort of like subpar platformers on the uh, the PC Engine. If I, I mean, I'm not, you know, trying to uh, offend any PC Engine fans out there, but some of the platformers are just uh, they're they're not in the same league as like Sonic and Mario. Um, but this, Jackie Chan, for whatever reason, it's really well made. Again, it's Hudson Soft. They always did a good job on their games. Uh, but it's fun. It's uh, semi-challenging without being like too, very, too terribly difficult. I think that's another thing that Hudson Soft had a good grip of, was like a balance of like challenge and fun. Um, so just an all-around really great game. 
Uh, very nice graphics. Jackie himself is very expressive, and it's a really cute 16-bit representation of uh, everybody's favorite Kung Fu master, and a really good soundtrack as well. So top to bottom, left to right, all things considered, uh, a really great game, and again I say I think one of the better platformers actually on the PC Engine. It is Jackie Chan! And uh, shockingly, it is not a game uh, where you have to rescue Jackie's uncle. I don't know how they missed that. I just feel like anything involving Jackie Chan, there should be an uncle, his Uncle Bill, or whoever it is, and he's got to rescue him, and he's got to beat up a bunch of bad guys in the Bronx, a.k.a. Vancouver. Uh, so thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the hunt. Hope you enjoyed having, having a, a little look at uh, Hijima. Um, I will go ahead and put a link down in the description. So if you want to go to the hard off I went to today, uh, if you ever get the chance, you can just look it up quickly on Google Maps and get down there and pick yourself up a copy of Hot Scramble. It's only a thousand dollars, and that is a steal if I've ever heard one. Anyway, again, thanks for watching, everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me hear all of your critiques and everything else down in the comments. I always appreciate that. And until next time, take care, everybody, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.